Hey, this is Oli from Metal.de again, and we're here uh, together with, with Trevor from Unearth. I, it's my pleasure to meet you. Same and here. how are you? Doing very well. Yeah. Happy to be here. Is it your uh, first time at Summer Breeze? No, I think it's our fifth time playing. We've been here, been coming here a lot. Um, I love this festival, it's one of the best in the world. Ours Village is, is really cool, huge crowds. It's always been a fun, fun fest to play. Is there anything uh, the makers of this festival could do better for uh, the bands or even for the uh, audience? A, j a jacuzzi would be nice. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm kidding. No, it's it's it's, it's awesome. There's, uh, it's, there's there's bars, there's food back here, there's plenty of space. Uh, all sorts of cool people hanging out, just talking with friends, old friends, new friends, and uh, it's really really cool. And then I think the festival grounds, it's easy to get to every stage. Like last night, I was at main stage watching Mon Marth and had a short walk over to watch Esquela grind. It's like it's all. It's all you know centered you can hear everything it's it's a it's a great fest yeah yeah um on earth does exist for uh, 26 years yeah. uh, now and what was the best moment for you in that band so far uh there's been a few that, that stick out um i think one of the main ones was uh was, there was hellfest in, in the in, in 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 new york and jersey um back in the day you know not the france version and uh, it was 04 and it was it was insane there was no barricade and it was you know 5,000 people or something it was just complete mayhem it was, it was a madhouse uh we did main stage at download in 2010 it was our biggest crowd ever it was like six to sixty thousand people and then there's going bonkers uh biggest circle pit maybe of our career uh, playing main stage vakken was a big one uh, we've had massive shows here as well i mean there's there's so many great moments to count and uh we just keep on keep on trying to move forward 26 years is a long time but we we just want to do it so we can't. Yeah, and you've uh, just uh, released an EP, which includes a few uh, live songs. Could this be taken as an announcement for a new record? Uh, no, I mean we, we we're constantly writing and just having you know trading ideas. Uh, but the the two studio songs on there are actually songs that were too close for us to cut from the record. So the Wretch of the Ruinous came out last year, yeah. and we wanted them on the record, but we have a strict rule. We never more than 11 songs on an album so we had a 13 song album we had other songs we cut like we always have like songs that could be b-sides we don't treat them that way we just kind of cut them these songs were too good to not put out so we just decided to put them out with two live songs from the wretch of the ruinous and just kind of put that out. i was like about a year after the release and just kind of put more put, put more eyes on the full length while also getting these these songs you know out there and Unearth, uh, or uh, the Reg, the Runes came out when more conflicts uh, came out uh, in the world and more wars and the, the uh, climate change and all that uh, stuff. Um, don't get me wrong, does all that help to play that aggressive music or has it an uh, impact on your lyrics or the song? That, that's what the record is about. It's directly about climate change and the wars that are gonna, going to come from it and have already started from it. Um, I mean, I, I, I've always written about, you know, about real life situations the way I see it. I don't write about fantasy, not, not, not criticizing bands I do, but I just, I've always written from that perspective. Um, I try not to get too political, but I do put my views out, out there and I, I never preach on stage, but the, I think the main, the main crisis facing humanity right now is climate change because once countries get desperate, they're going to go to try to go to other countries with either uh, migration or trying to get the, the natural resources natural resources resources from those countries and we're going to uh, find ourselves in a world of hurt very, very quickly and it's, ar it's already starting yeah so it's, it's, it makes it easier to write about because it's happening so yeah. you just you, you see the, the evidence is there the, the experience is there that we're all living and so i can just put it on paper and, and yell about it and try to hope for a, you know, a positive change for many people it's uh always kind of good feeling anyway just to hear uh, aggressive music it's a good release and uh, that's why I don't try to preach on stage because I want people to have an escape from from, from real life but uh, if they don't focus on lyrics they can they can read my message and hopefully to you know make a positive uh, change in, in yeah. their lives to kind of if we all all add up and make positive changes and vote the right way to get people to not you know invest in fossil fuels and to get away from there then we'll have a cleaner planet and we'll have a, a more time here more pleasant time here after your show at uh, Rock Hearts many people there said about things like what on earth the best act in the in the whole building um how does that feel f uh, how do you feel when you hear that since you uh, shared the stage with judas priest and bruce dickinson and that uh, kind of bands and artists 
Uh, we've put a lot of work into our craft for a long time. Um, so we've been a band for 26 years, and, we, and bands before that. So we take great, great pride in what we can do. But to be recognized like that um, is it's it's flattering for one, but it, it feels good to be to be named in, in you know yeah. in those names. You know, to have your name you know put up there with them. Um, that, that that show was awesome. Rock Cars was, was a killer show. It's perfect timing for us too. Um, you know, it was later in the afternoon before the soccer game. You know, yeah. the football match, and yeah. so uh, we had everyone there, and it was a massive show, and yeah. it was the pits were nonstop, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you have uh, some special uh, rituals to prepare for a show? Or so, because one musician once said uh, he has to uh, visit the Dixie toilets uh, one hour before the show because. That's the only quiet place for him. Really? Yeah. Uh, we call it power hour. So we generally we take out, uh, we either drink vodka or tequila. Some guys like vodka, some tequila. And we take a, a few shots to kind of warm up. And we stretch out. We do some push-ups maybe if we're in the mood. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we just kind of get limbered up and listen to music, usually you know, classic metal. You just kind of get psyched up. And you, you know the, that, that hour is like a warm-up before before the big game, you yeah. know what I mean? So you, you, you can't go up there cold. You can, but you're going to suck. If you go up there warmed up and fired up and you know, a couple of shots in you and, and listen to music that you love, then you, you go out there on fire. Just like starting the engine. Exactly, yeah. 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 So it takes one hour. If, if you start too early, then you might be kind of messy. But if you yeah. start one hour before, that we found it's like it's the right, right, the, the right moment. Okay. Uh, what are the uh, main differences between uh, the audience in the U.S. and in Europe, or even in Germany? Um, honestly, it's the, the the bridge is gapped worldwide. Um, as a uh, as, uh, as the, the gap has shrunk worldwide since we started touring in, in Europe in 2002 was our first time. Uh, I remember mosh pits were kind of different here. Uh, that wasn't quite as aggressive with the swing of the arms and you know, more of the hardcore dancing. But I think because the internet. You know, quickly showed us in the early to mid 2000s how to act towards you know certain songs or bands. It's just worldwide now. We can be in Japan, we can be in China, we can be in Australia, we can be in Germany, we can be in Canada, U.S. wherever. It's very similar yeah. how people react to heavy music these days, and uh, I, just, I love it. Uh, we have you know we have festivals now growing in America, um, but we're, we're kind of copying the the blueprint that Europe has with the summer festivals, and it's it's. Excuse me. Uh, getting away from like the touring festivals that we had, we had Warped Tour and Ozfest and Mayhem years ago, and now we're doing more of the, like these these weekend festivals. And it's, I think it's great. It's great to, to be able to play. It, it showcases bands that wouldn't normally play in front of you know ten thousand plus people a day, and it's it's really killer. Yeah. Is there one place on earth uh, you've never played but always wished to? It's funny you ask that because. Uh, I mean, there's, there's many places I, 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 I want to cover the whole planet but we've always really wanted to go to South Korea and we've had two shows kind of penciled in there and one was supposed to be after this tour and uh, another one was 10 years ago and both times they fell through so I'm, I'm disappointed uh, it's, it's a beautiful city during the pandemic uh, some some days when you had nothing to do I found myself in a YouTube uh, rabbit hole of just just looking up uh, South Korean street food And so I just really want to experience their street food. <laughs> It looks fucking awesome. Um, it's so different. So, uh, but I'd like to go to, to, to Seoul someday. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's been a quick and dirty one. Yeah. As I said, it's been my pleasure. Same Thanks man. for having me. And Appreciate the you. famous last, wor last words are yours. Uh, keep smashing. See you out there. <laughs>